This is a live female blue crab that I got from the grocery store. But instead of eating her, we are going to make her our pet. Sorry, maybe the silverware was a little too insensitive. All right, let's get her into some water. Here you go. Welcome our new pet crab. Right away I can tell that she's enjoying the clean salt water, which is a refreshing change from where she's been recently. And she no longer has to worry about ending up on the dinner plate. However, there's no way she can live a happy life in this small of a tank. So I've been preparing a much larger aquarium to be her new home. But before I show you guys that, let's go back in time and see when I got her at the grocery store. And there's a slight chance I got more than just one one blue crab. Okay, we're at Fiesta. It's a Latino grocery store, and I think Fiesta in Spanish means a celebration. And there's gonna be at least one crab in this store that has something to celebrate. Let's go get him. Oh my goodness, guys. Look at all these crabs. Oh, he looks like he might want a new home. Or he's just mad. Oh, they're all mad. I would be mad too, though. We're gonna get this mad one, and this is actually a female. There we go. She's actually missing a leg, but they will grow back. I actually got a second blue crab to be her partner. Bye guys, sorry we can't take you all. All right guys, let's get these home quick. Once at home, I put them each in a separate bucket where they could slowly adjust and acclimate to the aquarium water. They started having a bubble competition. I think the female wins. I decided to name the male Custard and the female Brulee. Okay guys, so this is the aquarium that I have prepared for them over here. We have a nice big air geyser. Oxygen in the water is really important. On this side, we have a beautiful bed of sand because they love digging in sand. Before we put them in, I want them to adjust to the water a little bit more in the buckets. And while they do that, I went to the store to get them some food. I got them some nice fresh shrimp, some live snails, live clams, and corn. Apparently they like vegetables too. While I was there, I also saw the poor live octopus being sold as food. A lot of you know that I really want to keep a grocery store octopus as a pet, but I want to do it right and their aquarium will be really expensive. So if you want it to happen sooner, make sure you subscribe, watch this video all the way through, and make sure you like the video. I also started to go fund me for those who want to help a little more. They also had these sad live bullfrogs being sold as food, which I also want to raise in the future, so the GoFundMe will help with that as well. Here comes the female blue crab into her new home. Went straight for the bubbles. <laughs> there she is, soaking in her new environment. To me, she looks visibly happy in this aquarium and even gives us a little wave with her mouth. And then she goes straight back to the bubbles, which is currently her favorite spot in this tank. And now time to introduce Custard. Woo! Immediately, Brulee advances toward Custard, showing him that she was here first. And he definitely gets spooked out a little bit. Once Custard finally calms down and sticks a landing, they both start to observe each other from a distance, seeing if the other one is a threat. It seems like Custard might be trying to build up some confidence, and he even has a little pep talk with himself in the reflection. Custard paddles himself a little bit closer to get a better look, but Brulee does not seem impressed. After observing each other a few moments longer, Brulee finally makes an advancement, and they both seem to make a mutual agreement not to be mean to each other. But I do think Brulee needed some personal space, so she started to explore the other side of the tank where the bed of sand is. In the wild, blue crabs will sleep in the sand because it's both comfortable and a good hiding place and makes them feel safe. Which is really important because in the wild, there's a lot of creatures out to get them. After finding the perfect spot, Brulee starts to make her bed with some vigorous digging, a couple good tucks in the sand, and a nice flip of the sand to finish it off. She is snug as a bug in a rug. Meanwhile, Custard is having a blast dancing in the bubbles. He kept doing this thing where he would come out of the bubbles and then run full speed right back in. It's like a whole different definition of taking a bubble bath. I'm really not quite sure why blue crabs love bubbles so much, but I have to say, he does make it look pretty fun. 
He kept it up for quite a while, but eventually got bored and decided to go annoy Brulee while she was trying to take a nap. She cannot be happy for him walking right over her. I think it's time for some food. I decided to start with the vegetable, but then Custard lunges forward and almost pinches my hand. I love his enthusiasm. Once he finally got a hold of it, he absolutely loved the boiled corn. Blue crabs are omnivores, and although they prefer meat like clams and shrimp, they also will eat plants and algae. Custard is really loving the corn, but I want him to have some room for the other food, so I took it away and offered it to Brulee. At first, I thought she was going to lunge out of the sand and devour the corn like like Custard did, but turns out she's actually afraid of it. I tried to offer it to her many times, but I think the size made her nervous, so I decided to get a single kernel out, and then once she got a taste of the corn, she absolutely loved it like a little kid at a state fair. It's crazy to think that both Custard and Brulee not too long ago were in a metal bin at the grocery store waiting to become a meal but now they're in a new home enjoying a wonderful meal of their own. Okay, Brulee, don't fill up too much. It's almost time for the second entree. Snails. At first, they didn't really know what to think and were pretty timid. But then Brulee mustered up enough confidence and dove right on top of them. You might be wondering if they're able to get past the snail shell, but really their claws are like built-in nutcrackers. Their mouth is also razor sharp and almost works like a wood chipper. You can see Custard here just shredding this snail shell up. This reminds me a lot of when I have pistachios. They're a lot of work, but they're so delicious, it's worth it. And I can tell that Custard and Brulee are really enjoying these snails. In fact, they're enjoying them so much, I wanted to see what Quiche and Omelette, the two spiny lobsters that I got from the grocery store, would do with the snails. And of course, they absolutely shredded them up. Now poor Lentil the eel wasn't able to get any snail, so I gave in and gave him a piece of shrimp. I decided to finish off their meal with a clam, and right away, Custard gets to work. Clam shells are a lot harder to get through than snails, and Custard definitely seems to be having some trouble. Something they'll do in the wild is wedge the tip of their claw into the opening of the clam and then pry the shell open. And as you can see, Custard is trying to do that here. He just doesn't have the hang of it yet. His claw may also be weak from everything he's been through recently. In comes Brulee to give it a try. And she is not very polite when it comes to getting the clam away from Custard. She grabs it right out from underneath him and pretty soon Custard gives her a try in getting the clam open. But Brulee has even less success than Custard and gives up pretty quickly. So I decided to crush the clam myself and put it on a plate for them. They absolutely loved it. Clams contain a lot of essential nutrients to make crabs strong and healthy. And who knows what these two crabs went through before I got them at the grocery store. So this meal is definitely what they need to rejuvenate completely. Check out Custard showing off his muscles. I decided to give the leftover clam to Quiche and Omelette and they also had a really hard time getting into it. So I crushed it up and then they completely devoured it. Even Lentil the eel got a couple bites in, as well as a couple kicks to the face. 
custard in Brulee's tank seemed like it was missing something, so I wanted to add a nice little cave for some shelter. But as I was trying to dig the foundation for the cave, custard would not let me do it. Come on, dude. I know you'll like the cave. Blue crabs have very fast reactions, so I was definitely a little bit nervous here. Don't try this at home. It can be really painful. He finally gave me some space to work and I started to set up the cave. As I was finishing the cave, I felt like something was missing though, and Custard and Brulee even had a side meeting criticizing the cave, so I decided to ask my wife her thought. Oh wow, I love that. That looks really good, Josh. I think the only thing I would change is maybe adding a little more rocks like to the side to kind of blend the cave better. Maybe some decorations on top. Other than that, it looks really good. Much better. And the two crabs gave their seal of approval. Okay, we are currently on our way to an aquarium to try to find some tank inhabitants for custard and brulee. We might not succeed because as you can imagine, blue crabs really eat anything they can get their claws on. So if we're gonna find some creatures that work well with their living situation, they need to be either really fast or super tough. Let's find out. They had clownfish, but those would be too slow. This moray eel would probably eat the crabs. This porcupine puffer is just too cute. And this baby lionfish is just too much of a snack. I almost gave up, but then settled on these two damselfish in this dirty tank. These guys will be fast and agile. Perfect. I named this guy Alfred and this guy Jeffrey. And they both love the cave even more than the crabs do. The next day, they were ready for another meal, and I decided to give them a challenge by putting a shrimp in this dog toy. But it didn't seem to be that hard of an obstacle, at least for Brulee, because she figured it out right away. I didn't want her to have the whole shrimp because it was way too big and I wanted Custard to have some too, but in hindsight, I should have just let her because she did not let it go without a huge bite. Some of you might find this mean, and it probably is, but in the wild, blue crabs really struggle for their food and it's actually healthy for them to be stimulated in that way so they can grow their different muscles. I eventually did get half the shrimp back and put it in the dog toy again so Custard could give it a try. He took a bit longer to figure it out but eventually did and took the shrimp inside the cave. Shrimp has to be one of their new favorite foods thus far. For their next meal, I decided to give them another challenge, and I was really surprised how quickly they got the pieces of shrimp out of this little ball. Their enthusiasm was intense, and this time, Custard won the first rights to try the challenge. He succeeded pretty quickly and got the shrimp out with ease. I've been really surprised with their appetites and how much they just love eating. Brulee went through quite a bit more effort to get this challenge done, and she tugged on it so hard I decided to just let her have it. I was a little concerned that she would get her claws stuck, but she showed me pretty quickly she knew exactly what she was doing. I love how Alfred and Jeffrey are eating up the scraps as they come. Of course, Custard had to come back for seconds and retrieve the last shrimp. I think Custard and Brulee love their new home and have thoroughly enjoyed these meals. Tomorrow for the grand finale, I've gotten them their own private chef to make them the most exquisite meal they've ever had in their lifetime. Custard, why are you burying yourself with the leftover shrimp in the sand? Dude. Welcome to Josh's Kitchen, where we don't serve crab, but we do serve crabs. On the menu for today is spaghetti and cake. So for the spaghetti, of course we need some nice, fresh 
noodles. Next up, I think I'm actually just gonna give them each one meatball because these things are pretty sizable. And of course, we have to have the garlic bread. It's very important to plate the dishes so that they're really appealing. Sadly, the dishes fell apart as soon as they hit the water, but the crab's enthusiasm made up for it. They raced each other to the food and Brulee masterfully snags a piece of the garlic bread. Custard ended up settling for a meatball. They absolutely devoured the food and Brulee ended up eating some of the noodles as well. This was such a big meal, I actually ended up waiting till the next day to make the cake. For the base, I used scallops, and for the icing on the cake, I put squid. And of course, you can't have a cake without candles, although I had to blow them out pretty fast before the wax melted. I think they're gonna absolutely love it. As soon as they noticed the cake was right in front of them, they pounced on it. Of course, they went straight for the icing first. And then they ended up burying themselves with the leftovers, my goodness. Thank you all so much for watching. This was a really fun journey. I look forward to giving you guys updates and I'll catch you on the next adventure.